Welcome to RH at Home. I'm Chad Clement, pastor here at Redemption Hill Church. We're excited that you're joining us again today. Hey, we're going to take a little bit of a pause this weekend from our, our study, our normal study going through the book of Matthew. Um, hopefully so far, you know, we've, we've gone through the first four chapters of Matthew, and I hope it's been really encouraging to you. I hope it's something that, um, that, that you've enjoyed thus far. And I would just say buckle up, get ready. Um, we're, getting to get, we're going to be getting into some really awesome stuff here shortly. Stuff that like we're going to be looking at like sermons that Jesus actually preached and gave. And you know, we're going we're gonna to see amazing stories about Jesus. And so it's going to be a, a, a great remainder of the study. But this weekend, we've had what we call our D-Now, our Discipleship Now. Um, program. It's a retreat that we put on for our youth every year. We've done it every year except for one, which was last year, 2020, and that darn coronavirus even screwed up our D now. But it's something that we've done every year. It's a little weekend retreat. We go up to the Smith Farm um, and out of Pogus, Georgia, about 30 minutes or so here from, from here from, from our church. And it's awesome. We get you know, I guess that I think this year about 35 of our um, youth are going and we'll have five or six of our college students coming back and David and Michaela helping lead and, you know, a bunch of the adults. And it's just, it's a great time. But, but we're on this, have this opportunity to go on this big old farm, get away from everything. The boys will, you know, sleep in a, in a tent outdoors. And the girls, there's like three different cabins that will be divided up into. And it's just going to be, it's going to be really good, or it is really good. It's awesome. And this, this year's theme is this idea of, of, of being a follower of Christ and what that looks like. And, 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 uh, and so this, this, this weekend uh, and, this, and Sunday in our live in-person service, it will look a lot different. We're, we're going to pause from our Matthew study as well and for those who are able to join us in person, they're going to be able to hear some testimony from our youth. And, and in fact, this Sunday, our worship team is going to be led by our youth and, uh, or, or most of our youth and some of those college helpers. So it's, it's, it's awesome. It's exciting. And, and I just felt, you know, one, I wanted us faith family in person as well as, as faith family or RH at home faith family. I want us to, I've been trying to keep us on the same basic course together and and so i i wanted to pause sunday um in person because we're going to approach it from the same viewpoint of our dina weekend and i just felt like it would be good for for you rh at home to also get like a little glimpse of of what we're going to be talking about in our dina weekend and so our, our our theme this this year comes from matthew uh, a verse that we'll get to later, but Matthew, uh, let me get to it here. Matthew 16. Verse 24. So Matthew 16, 24. And this is like the overarching theme of our D now weekend, but it says this. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's Full declaration that Jesus gives. Like if if you want to come follow me, if you want to be part of this group, and he says, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Those are bold things. Those are great asks. Um, in our small groups this weekend, the, the kids are going to be unpacking that, and a lot of their work is going to looking at uh, things they're going to look at is going to come from Matthew, but. The teaching part is going to be looking at John chapter 10. And so if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, look in John chapter 10. And this awesome story um, that Jesus gives, not really a story, what, what takes place is, the, is the, the book of John is written by the apostle John, the, the disciple, the same John that will write 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and Revelation. Right? John, you, know, for, you, you probably remember, was was a disciple, but he was like part of the inner circle, like the, the three closest to Jesus. 
He was the disciple that was that Jesus himself referred to as the beloved or the one that he loved. And so John, you know, John writes this this gospel, and and this takes place after Jesus had had done a performed a miracle, a healing, and throughout the gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and really throughout the Old New Testament, there's there's one group that tends to pop up quite a bit and usually nothing good happens or or at least they're not trying to cause good it's the pharisees and the crazy thing about it is they were like religious leaders they were like the jewish elite their problem was they found or or, or they thought they were they were righteous or they found their righteousness through actions through keeping religious customs and traditions of of keeping laws from the Old Testament and so so they were their righteousness was bound in their own actions and thus they began to kind of teach the same and so they would kind of push that upon their followers and so what we believe what we say today is our righteousness isn't found in what we do our righteousness is found in Christ okay and so so these Pharisees though are, are going to continually pester and prod Jesus and in this particular case Jesus is, is addressing them and so John chapter 10 and we're this morning we're gonna look at verse the, the the first 10 verses and and I don't typically have like points but I'm gonna make six kind of statements that we can see about about this particular passage all right um, and so John chapter 10 starting in, in verse 1 says this truly truly I say to you he who does not come, or he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So what we see really early on here is, is Jesus is, is painting this picture. He's going to use a, like a metaphor. He, he's going to paint a word picture uh, to describe the difference between like Maybe him and the Pharisees. And so in this, it, it, we, we see this, this, this picture that he makes of the Pharisees. And he describes the Pharisees there that we see in uh, the end of verse 1 as thieves and robbers. And then Jesus himself compares himself there. Um, but he, he is the, the shepherd for the sheep. Okay, And so, so early on what we see like in this, what, what, what Jesus... Um, says is like he he's the only real person suited to be followed but he's the only real one like the rest like the pharisees and and we could we can even take pharisees out and insert whatever else like they're not ultimately worthy of of being followed of, of, of being the followers of jesus is he he's the shepherd um says uh, but number two but but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep he he's the one that will take care of the sheep he's the one that will provide for the sheep he he protects the sheep later on where he, he's going to make this this statement that that the sheep know his name and he knows each and every one of those sheep right he he's gonna, he also talks about how like those those hired hands will we'll flock, will run when trouble arrives. And so, so Jesus, really in the beginning of this, this what we kind of call this narrative of the good shepherd, says that he's really ultimately the only one worthy of being followers. The rest, the Pharisees, they're thieves, they're robbers. Right, wrapped up in that idea at the beginning when we introduced the Pharisees, that, that picture when we say that they're robbers, they're thieves, is, is they're trying to bound us, bind people to, to um, earning their salvation or earning their righteousness. It's built upon them, their actions, the things that they do. Now we go a little bit further, and it gets pretty awesome in verse three it says to him the gatekeeper opens the sheep hear his voice he calls his his own sheep by name and leads them out that that second point there is that jesus knows you 
Um, he, he knows you. He knows your name. And he desires that you follow him. Look, look it's, it's, it's interesting because he, he says that, that the sheep hear his voice. And Jesus, in this metaphor, walks into that pen where those sheep are all kind of scattering around and begins to kind of call for him. And they, they hear his voice. You know, a shepherd, when he d d decides or, or tries to move things, he, his, his, he, he tries to gather those people up and he'll use his voice to guide and direct. It's, it's interesting because, you know, that, that voice of that shepherd, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm not a shepherd, right? I don't know much about sheep. But, but I know this, like that, that shepherd, his voice can calm the sheep. Right? When, those, when, those, when there's something around those sheep that's stirring them up, that's making them excited or, or bringing fear and whatever, in the, in the certain, like that, that shepherd can kind of go to where that herd of the sheep are and begin to speak, and he can calm the sheep. That shepherd's voice is authoritative. Right? It's that, that shepherd's voice that will drive them and move them and push them to, to where he desires for them to go beautiful picture even in that authoritative voice when that shepherd is guiding the sheep it's for the sheep's own good it, it, he knows what's best for those sheep right so he'll he'll guide them to where the water is right he'll, he'll guide them to you know maybe a safer pasture a greener pasture a better pasture as they go through turbulent times, his voice and, 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 and he'll, he'll help guide and direct them through those turbulent areas, those difficult paths and trails. So it's that shepherd. And I love the picture that he, he knows the sheep and the sheep know him. He knows you. See, in this picture that we see, this metaphor, Jesus is the shepherd. Well, we already said, like, the Pharisees, well, they're the thieves, they're the robbers. You know where that place is us? We're the sheep. We're the sheep. The Lord, what a beautiful picture. And He begins by, by letting us know that He's ultimately the only voice, the only one that we ought to be following. You know, we live in a world that's bombarding us with different options that's bombarding us with different things that are trying to distract us that are trying to grab our attention and trying to cause us to follow them there are causes there are all sorts of things jesus says, i'm truly the only one the second one he says like y'all like i know you i know you i know what's best for you We get to um, verse 4. So John chapter 10, verse 4 says, And when he was brought out, or when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. You know, I, I think this is such an awesome picture because for our youth this weekend, we're, we're encouraging them and we're trying to help them become followers, like true, genuine, fully devoted followers of Jesus. Right? And, and, and we, we, we wonder sometimes, maybe not out loud, but our minds, like our head knows certain things, but our hearts sometimes differ. And there can be a struggle of like, why? Why, why do we follow him? And maybe you have a, a, a question like someone, someone asks you, you know, an unbeliever, you're talking about, well, why should I follow Jesus? And again, as we've kind of walked through this beginning thing, one, he's the only one worthy of following. Two, he knows us. Right? He, he, he knows that. But you know what the beautiful thing about this is? Is he goes before us. You know, sometimes... There's this weird view about our faith and of, of, of becoming a Christian. And, and sometimes it can be contained simply to, to people who just want to escape hell. How we, we call it fire insurance. 
They don't want to spend eternity in hell, so they want to accept Jesus as their Savior, thinking that's the only benefit. The only benefit out of this, the only benefit out of Christianity, the only benefit that we get through Jesus is that, that he just doesn't let us or doesn't send us to hell, we go to heaven. But the reality is this, and what Jesus says that here's the good shepherd is, no, 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 no. Yes, that's part of it, but there's so much more. You know, as we go through life, we're going to find ourselves going through several different types of pastures. Some will be that really green grass, good pastures. Times of peace and tranquility. Times where, where everything seems like sufficient. There's plenty of food, and plenty of money, and all those things. The things that we need, the necessities are covered, and things are good. And we're also going to probably find ourselves on pastures where things may feel sparse. Yeah, there's food, there's provision, but it's not all you can eat. <laughs> and it's struggle and it's hard. There's going to be times when we're, we're, we're being driven from one pasture to another pasture. Along that little road, there are going to be lots of bumps. It's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of blood and sweat and tears. A lot of questions. And sometimes some uncertainty. We know we're on a path somewhere. We hope and we expect that somewhere to be another pasture. But all we see is that bumpy, rocky road ahead of us. And that pasture might look like it's far in the distance or, or, or sometimes we might not even be able to see it. We can just see the mountain we got to climb. But the beautiful thing about this, what Jesus says as our shepherd, is he goes before us. He's out in front of us. Um, I think it was last week in our little Facebook Live welcome, I shared this verse with you from Deuteronomy chapter 31. Um, and I love this because this is Old Testament, long before what we're reading this story, this narrative of the Good Shepherd. But in Joshua, you have Joshua's having to go through a lot of things. He's facing a lot of difficulties. He, he's struggling even in his own leadership capacity and, and how to lead. And here he is following in the footsteps of Moses. They're trying to get to the promised land. There's all sorts of things that they go through to get there. And a lot of these different things. And listen, he's, he's reminded in there, like we see throughout this, this, this portion of Scripture, this, this encouragement of being strong and courageous. But when you get to verse, um, yeah, so verse 6 is, Be strong and courageous, do not fear or be in dread of them. It is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. And so you know, he's, he's promising Joshua that, that, that God's going to be with them. But what's awesome, uh, even... To me, even maybe greater than that, that he's going to be with you. But when you drop down to verse 8, it says, It is the Lord who goes before you, and he will be with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Do not fear or do not be dismayed. So that's an awesome picture that, that he goes before us. That shepherd, yeah, he's in the midst of it. And this is what only, only God can do this. God in his omnipotence. Uh, omnip, um, um, <laughs> can't talk today. It's only, only God is able to, to be in the midst of you, with you, while still being before you, going ahead of you, blazing that trail ahead of you, clearing the path, preparing the way. And see, that's what a good shepherd does. The good shepherd hasn't left you. The good shepherd hasn't just purchased you, left you in a pen, and gone away. No, he hasn't. He's worthy to be followed. He knows you. He knows your name. He knows everything about you. He knows every hair on your head or every lock of hair on your head. Right? And he goes before you. He clears the path. He prepares the way. And as you're going through those difficult times, he's with you. He'll never leave you. He will never forsake you. Verse 7 and 8. 
says, so Jesus again said to them, and here he's going to change his comparison. Earlier he's the shepherd, and now he, he changes. He goes, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And all who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. Jesus says there that, that he's the gate. He's the only way in, the only entrance. See, the way those pins were constructed during those days, they would, they would, they would lead the sheep. They would kind of corral them. And there would only be one door, one entrance. And often what would happen is that, that shepherd would, would lay down at the entrance. Right? That, and they, they would be there. They would be the physical door. And so what Jesus says is like, first before he's a, he's a picture of the shepherd of going and leaving. All, but here he's like, he's the door. So if you want to get into that pen, if you want to have access, if you want to get in there, the only way you have access to get in there is through the door. Right? He, he says, before that, he says, um, all who come before me are thieves and robbers. Right? The, those other guys that are trying to figure out ways, they're manipulating things, they're twisting things, they're thieves, they're robbers, they mean no good. But, but I'm, not only am I the shepherd, but I'm the door. See, I, I think, not I think, I, one of the things I love about our faith is God and his goodness and his mercy and his grace like simplified this for us not for his son not for the good shepherd not for the gate for us see he, he paved a way where there was there was only one way to enter see he made it simple for us only one way you know, it reminds me you know Sometimes we think, well, that's not fair. It doesn't work. Like, I don't understand. Like, only one way. Like, I, I, uh, I, I think of it this way. Like, our cell phones. Right? Most of you, I don't, I don't, I happen to have a, um, an iPhone. I don't know what number it is, but I, I have an iPhone. For me to have access to my phone, that for me to enter into the phone, like, be able to call someone, check an email, whatever, I have to put in my passcode. That's the only way in. Right? No, nobody else can have access to my phone unless they put that passcode in. Once I have that passcode, it opens it up. Right? Same thing for your debit card. Right? You go to the bank, you want to withdraw money from there, you put that, that debit card into the ATM machine, you have to put a code in there to have access to those funds, to have access to the money. That card doesn't do anything until the code is put in. Once the code is put in, then you have access to it. Without the code, there's no access to it. Right? And that's the same picture here of sorts, where Jesus is saying, like, the only way that you have access ultimately to the Father and ultimately to, to, to heaven, the only way you have access is through me, through the door. Like, I, I, I'm the passcode to allow you to have entrance in. Verse 9 says this. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. You know what Jesus does? Jesus leads us to good pastures. That's what he does. He leads us to good pastures. Ultimately, if we come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, if we accept him as our Lord and our Savior, if we accept that he really is the only one to be followed, if we accept that, that he is that door, that entrance, and the only way that we have access to God, the only way we have access to heaven is through him, if we accept those things, the ultimate green pasture for us is heaven. 
We have that he will lead us ultimately to heaven. He will take us ultimately to heaven. But he also will guide and direct us to green pastures here on earth. He leads us to good things. Now that doesn't mean that we won't have difficulties and struggles along the way. But oftentimes those difficulties and struggles only make the green pastures greener. See, he's a good shepherd. He loves you. He knows you. And he wants to take you to those good pastures. And the final verse we're going to look at today is verse 10. Verse, verse 10 says this, The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Remember the, the metaphor, the thief, the robbers. Well, that's the Pharisees. It's those religious people who have based everything upon keeping laws, keeping traditions. They'd created this work-like um, access to righteousness. But Jesus says, like, they're robbing you. They're, 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 they're stealing they're misleading you. They're making this burdensome and awful and difficult and struggle. And, and ultimately what Jesus says is the good shepherd, like I've come to bring life. And not just life, but abundant life. See, there's a pretty common misconception or misperception of Christianity. There are a lot of people that feel like Christianity is nothing more than a list of do and don'ts. The, the reality that they think is like Christianity, like it holds us back. If you become a Christian, you can't have, you have to give up fun. If you become a Christian, you have to, to give up purpose. There's, there's so much that you have to give up to be a Christian. But what John 10.10 10 tells us flies in the face of that belief. What John 10.10 10 says is, listen, I come to bring life, and I bring life more abundantly. Y'all, as believers, as, as people who have put their faith and trust in the Lord, and as people who are following Him, like I'm talking like really following the Lord, like we are living an abundant life. He's given us purpose. He's given us passion. He's given us love and grace and mercy. He's given us a reason to wake up in the morning. He's given us an abundant life. See, the Christian life is not about things we can't do. It's about the things that we can do. It's not about the relationships that we can't have. It's about the relationship we now have. Christ came, a good father, a good shepherd. He's worthy to be followed. He knows us, knows us by name. He knows everything about us. He goes ahead of us and he wants to lead us. He's the gate. He's the only way of salvation. He leads us to good pastures. And following Jesus, well, it ultimately results in a full or abundant life. This weekend, we've pushed and taught. We've prayed over we've read scripture about following Jesus what it looks like what it looks like in our own lives what it looks like around us for the youth what it looks like maybe in their youth group this picture that Jesus gives us in John chapter 10 and quite honestly my, my encouragement for you is to read the rest of the chapter, to read the rest of John chapter 10, 
Because there's a lot more in there. That picture of the good shepherd. Folks, you're watching this. Maybe there's a party that's bad. It's exciting that the youth have a chance to get away for the weekend. It's, that's awesome. They get to hear like these teachings and, and they, they get to be in small groups. And they get to pray and that's, have worship. That's awesome. Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus your good shepherd? Listen, some of you watching this, like you say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Like, yeah, he, he's my good shepherd. In the midst of the last year, year and a half of all these different struggles, what does that look like in your life? Honestly, I want you to step back. I want you to think about that for a moment. Like, if he's the shepherd, that means he's supposed to be leading you. You're supposed to be responding to his voice. You're supposed to be following his direction, doing what he calls you to do, what he wants you to do, going where he desires you to go. Are you living that way? Or, as a sheep, are you trying to direct the shepherd? See, that's the imbalance in my life oftentimes. See, my, my struggle oftentimes is I am a believer. I am a Christian. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. But I struggle at times with Him being the shepherd because I have my own wants and desires. I have my own understanding of how I think things should go. See, I'm the one that wants to direct the shepherd rather than submitting to His voice, His leading, His direction. And that's the struggle. That's the reality. Because the reality is that shepherd, that good shepherd, is protecting us from those thieves and those robbers. He's trying to guide us to good pastures. I just tend to make the journey difficult. So as you're watching this, if you're a believer... Maybe it's time that you need to consider some of that. Is he really your shepherd? Are you really submitting yourself to him? Really? I mean, really. Not just on Sundays. Not just certain times. Like, like it, it doesn't have, like, he's a shepherd always. The second group that may be watching this, maybe he, he hasn't been your shepherd. Maybe you've been like that wild sheep if sheep can be wild I don't know but you've done a lot of wandering and your heart's desire is that you you want to be protected now by the good shepherd you, you, you want to be brought into that green pasture you, you want to experience the abundant life here now but you also want to have the ability to be able to go to heaven after this life. I want to make sure I'm crystal clear. Jesus, in, in what we read today, Jesus said there's one way in. There's only one way in. Like, I'm the door. There's only one way. That's it. That's through Jesus. It's the understanding that, that we've all sinned. We've all come short of God's glory. In realizing that one of the ways in which God demonstrated His love for us was while we were still sinning, while we were still messed up, while we were still doing wrong, that He died for us. He died on the cross for you. The rebellious sheep the one outside the pen. The dirty, the gnarly, the dis whatever. Dis like He died for you and for me. We're all part of that. He died for us then. It's a beautiful promise. For God so loved the world 
that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If we believe in Jesus, really believe, like we honestly, sincerely believe, and we, we ad admit our wrongs, our faults, our errors, and we ask Him to become our Lord and our Savior, our Good Shepherd, ask Him to come in our lives. The Bible tells us that He will become our Good Shepherd. And we have the chance now to follow that Good Shepherd into green pastures. So, the opportunity you have right now is to accept his call and to follow him. So maybe, just maybe there's someone watching this right now who's never done that, but you'd like to. If that's the case, you could say a simple prayer like this. Dear Lord, I know I've done wrong. I know I've failed in a lot of ways. Lord, I want to ask you to forgive me of those things. So I believe that, that you, Jesus, you did die on the cross for my sins. And that you do love me. And that you are the good shepherd. Please, Jesus, come into my life. Become my Savior my king, my good shepherd. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for taking me. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer or something like that, you, you believed it. Not just recited, there's no magical words, but you believed it. Well, according to what we read today, the gate's been opened. <laughs> you now have access. You've, you now have been brought into that green pasture. My good shepherd, Jesus. He's there with you right now. And he will be ahead of you. He'll be clearing paths for you. He'll be with you. And he's ultimately going to take you at some point to the ultimate green pasture. Listen, if you made a decision today, my email address should be at the bottom. I'd be thrilled if you just reached out. Let us know. I'd, I'd just love to be able to pray for you. First and foremost, just be able to pray for you. Be able to come alongside you in, in whatever way possible. Maybe you're watching this and you just have more questions. Like, like this, this, this scripture, and these teachings, maybe open your eyes a bit but you're just you're just struggling with a lot of questions like email me i don't have all the answers but i'll I, i'll come alongside you and help you find those answers i love you guys we miss seeing you but we hope to see you soon <laughs>